Hi everyone, I'm Rebecca Virginia, and today I'm going to be showing you some nautical and coastal DIYs. The Dollar Tree Coastal Collection is out at almost all of the Dollar Trees that I frequent, so I hope that you have also seen this collection at a store near you. First off, I am going to be showing you how to recreate this coastal trio sign. I love taking the trio signs from the Dollar Tree. They usually come out with some sort of version of this sign for pretty much every season, so it's around most of the year. This one is from the Thanksgiving time period, and all I did was disassemble it, and then I took the color Moss by Waverly Chalk Paint, and I painted all three sections of this sign. Now, when I think of coastal, even nautical themed DIYs, I always think distressed, something that has weathered the salt air, something message in a bottle, maybe that survived the ocean. So I always really like distressing my beachy coastal DIYs. I ended up going in with the shade Burnt Umber by Apple Barrel, White by Waverly Chalk Paint, and this Agave color also by Waverly Chalk Paint, and just dressing my signs up, and again, giving them a little bit more of that weathered look as though they have been in the salty air. This is a sign from last year's Coastal Collection, and I never used it, but I loved this piece of coral, so I just pried that off of the sign, and I'm going to be using that on the center piece of my trio sign. The Dollar Tree always comes out with a wide array of different types of wood ornaments for the season or holidays. The Coastal Collection, I have seen anchors, starfish, actual fish, mermaids. They have a really great selection of their wood ornaments. I chose to use the starfish in this case. I used white by Waverly Chalk Paint, then I used navy by Apple Barrel, and of course had to just dress it up a little bit. So I did put some burnt umber, which is a dark brown color by Apple Barrel, and dry brush that across the starfish to give it the distressed look. Jute is one of my favorite materials to DIY with, and it's perfect for the nautical look. Definitely gives me the idea of the sailor's knots and all sorts of different ropes and knots that they use on ships. So I went around the starfish twice using my hot glue and my jute to just add a little bit of definition to the starfish. Now it's time to reassemble the trio sign. I am using what is called nautical rope at Dollar Tree. They have two different kinds of ropes, nautical rope and a decorative rope. And I went with the nautical. It's a little bit thicker than the regular, but you could use either or. And I just attached this with hot glue. I also made a hanger portion up at the top of the trio sign. The problem with these larger signs is I can't get everything into frame, but I just made a simple loop using the hot glue. Also did a pretty easy expo using burlap, my favorite farmhouse ribbon. Yes, it's actually called farmhouse ribbon from the Dollar Tree and a raffia bow in the center. And then as the focal piece of the bow, I added a seashell that I got in a very large bag of seashells from the Dollar Tree, but even better if you use your own seashells, maybe from a recent beach trip. After that, I hot glued everything down into place, my starfish on the top and bottom, and that coral piece in the center of my sign. I really like how this came out. If you have any nautical themed rooms in your house, I think this would work perfect. I have a covered front porch, so I think I'm gonna hang it out there. Also something that might be going on my front porch, but I'll probably put in an LED light instead of an actual candle, is this coastal candle holder. When I saw this at the Dollar Tree, I knew I had to pick it up. It was such great quality. Really everything in the Dollar Tree's coastal collection is, in my opinion, so nice. You really don't have to DIY it much, but it's me, so I wanted to add a little something extra. I had totally forgotten that I picked up these silk screen stencils from the Martha Stewart collection. I don't even remember where I got them. It must have been probably Michael's or Hobby Lobby. And this was my first time working with a silk screen stencil. 
Um, it's kind of cool. I'm not very good at actual stenciling, which you'll see in my <laughs> Americana video in about two weeks when I do some patriotic DIYs, but the silk screens are so nice. I use the color Agave by Waverly, and I highly recommend them. If you ever see silk screen stencils at any of your local craft stores, highly recommend they work very, very well. Next, I took some Dollar Tree sand and started filling up my candle holder. And I also placed in there a small white candle, which no surprise is also from the Dollar Tree. And all you really have to make sure of is that you have enough sand in there to keep the candle in place so it doesn't move around. I was browsing the coastal collection at my local Dollar Tree and they have such nice items and pieces of decor that you really don't even need to DIY them in most cases. I came across this ceramic starfish and immediately fell in love. I almost didn't pick it up because I didn't know exactly what I would DIY with it and I wasn't sure how to use it as decor, but I ended up purchasing it and I'm really glad I did. It has a very nice weight to it and it's very detailed in person. It definitely looks like something you would pick up at Hobby Lobby for more than $1.25. I have this basket currently in my guest bathroom holding extra bath towels and I thought the starfish at the front of the basket would be the perfect nautical touch. I just used a little bit of hot glue to adhere the starfish to the front of the basket. I also really like that the starfish is white so it matches the white bath towels. I'm very happy with how this turned out and now I have a coastal touch in my guest bathroom. Next, I'm going to be showing you some of my absolute favorite coastal and nautical DIYs that I have made over the past couple of years. And I'm going to start off with this rustic coastal bottle. My inspiration was definitely a message in a bottle that you find in the ocean. I started off by taking jute or twine and wrapped it around the lower half of the neck of our bottle. And I got this bottle from Trader Joe's. It's the sparkling pink lemonade. I got it a while ago and I saved the bottle because I thought it was a really cool shape and pretty and I'm glad I did because it works perfect for this DIY. After I have wrapped the top bottleneck area in the twine, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the lower, probably quarter, maybe third of our glass bottle. And it's a little bit difficult at first just because of the shape of this bottle, but after I got the initial two, three layers of the twine onto my bottle, it was really easy and I didn't have to keep adding the hot glue anymore. It just stayed up on its own. This is another DIY where it's good to have a show or something fun to watch in the background because it's a really easy DIY, but it just takes a little while wrapping all of this twine around the bottle. Once I got the lower section covered in the twine, I went ahead and hot glued it into place and then just cut off the excess. Now to make our nautical looking knot slash braid that's going to be going down our glass bottle. I took this nautical rope from the Dollar Tree and I unwound it and split it up. And then I took three sections and I'm just making a really long braid. I wasn't sure how long I needed this at first so I just went ahead and made a super long braid and then I figured I could figure out the length after. After I was done braiding the jute rope, I went ahead and made a knot at the end just so that I wouldn't lose the braid, and then I cut it off from the larger spool of the nautical rope. Then I made a loop knot at one end of the nautical rope so that we had a circle, and I just held that in place with hot glue. And then I pulled the end part of our jute rope braid through that circle, and it created a knot at the top. And once I figured out the length that I wanted, I went ahead and took my scissors and just cut off the ends of our jute rope braid. Next, it was time to add all of the fun embellishments onto our nautical bottle, starting off with these seashells from the Dollar Tree. Once I figured out the lengths of the rope that I wanted, one was going to go down long and then one I wanted shorter, so I just knotted it up to make that one little piece a bit shorter. Then I just took hot glue and hot glued the shells down onto the jute rope. I couldn't find any at my Dollar Tree, but if you're able to find any of the sea glass, I think that would also look really pretty hanging off of this jute rope. On the two other hanging pieces of jute rope, I wanted to add some more nautical embellishments in. So I took these starfish clothespins that I got from the Dollar Tree and I took the starfish off the clothespin and then painted it white and to make it look old and nautical and go with the bottle. I also took some brown paint and really dirtied it up. 
I also picked up this Let the Sea Set You Free sign from the Dollar Tree, which is really cute, but I know I'm going to use in a different DIY. However, I really liked the sand dollar that came on it. So I went ahead and peeled that off of the sign and then painted that white and did, of course, the exact same thing, taking some brown paint and really dirtying it up. I attached our C embellishments using the exact same method that I did earlier. I just took some hot glue and then placed it down. And once I figured out the lengths, I just cut off the excess jute at the end. I, of course, want them all at different lengths, not at the same. So once I figured out where I wanted it, I just hot glued it, placed it down, and then cut off that excess jute. I found these awesome cork lights on Amazon. You get 10 for $11, so they're just a little bit over a dollar, a dollar and 10 cents. So it really does make it worth it, especially if you do lots of DIYs or you know that you're going to be making multiple bottles. Maybe you have a special event that you want lots of lights for. These are awesome. They are the fairy twinkle lights and they're on a pool tab. So no battery that you have to worry about. Battery packs can be really bulky and large and it fits perfectly down inside the bottle. It was hard to capture the beauty of this bottle with the lights off, so I had to leave the lights on for purposes of capturing the video, but trust me, it looks awesome in the dark too. If you're like me, you might have seen the coastal yard stakes at the Dollar Tree and wondered how you would actually use these in your home other than a yard stake, and I have got you covered in this DIY. So first up, I got this piece of wood. Um, this is one that I just had in my stash. We're redoing our deck. So of course I saved a bunch of the wood to use for crafting. So I am taking this and I'm just painting it in kind of a sandy color. I wanted it to be a light brown, but then I did go in and distress it a bunch. So it kind of looked like driftwood. That was the goal here. And I did end up drilling two small holes into the top of this piece of wood. Wood. I just used a regular drill. I didn't need any fancy materials. It's just, you know, my electric one that I got for 20 bucks on Amazon. And that is how I created the two holes. And these are the holes that we're going to be placing these fish into. The Dollar Tree fish steaks, I believe, are meant to just go ahead and put in your garden, but I wanted something actually to be used as display in my bathroom. Who doesn't have an ocean-themed bathroom in their house? So all that I did was place these down into the holes, and I got the varying heights just by really easily bending and breaking the yard stakes at the lengths that I wanted. Our next DIY is a faux glass float. I did a little bit of research on these because I'm sure that you all have seen these either in a beach town or in magazines and in decor. And they were traditionally Japanese fishing floats, but now they are more so used as decor. They can be called sea glass floats sea floats but you guys have probably seen these around i'll insert some pictures if you're not completely sure of what i'm talking about but we are going to make ours actually out of plastic so i grabbed one of these plastic terrariums from the dollar tree and to get that sea glass look i mixed a tiny bit of green paint with a good amount of mod podge and i used this dabber to apply it because Mod Podge can create bubbles and I liked that effect. I wanted it to have some bubbles in it so that's why I am dabbing so it really gives more of that sea foamy look. And now we are going to create. So I just grabbed a piece of jute. This one measured about 16 inches long and then I cut 12 pieces of jute also measuring 16 inches long. And this one we're going to be laying flat and then all of the other 12 pieces we're going to be making loops and just attaching those to the one piece that I have. So that long piece that we're attaching all the other ones to is going to go around the opening of our terrarium. But first, before we can start doing all the intricate knotting, I am just placing these on here. I try to space them out pretty evenly, but it's really easy to move the knots around. So once I had them all done, I took it and wrapped it around the opening of the terrarium and knotted it off. And once I had that knot in place and cut off all of the excess, I was able to move the knots around a little bit more just to make sure the spacing was all nice and good. Weaving looks complicated when it's done, but it's so easy. I grabbed two of the pieces of jute 
and I am just creating a knot. The only difficult part is you of course don't want to pull it too tight because you want it to have that little bit of an opening and I ended up doing two knots and then once I was done with that side I moved on to the next two and just kept repeating this process. Again the only difficult part was trying to maintain the similar opening width and length as all of the other ones but really this is supposed to be kind of creative and on your own so if it's not perfect it's okay and I just kept going around the opening in that first layer and then it's really easy I didn't want to show you me doing the entire fishing float but you're just going to continue this process and repeat it row after row taking two of the jute pieces next to each other knotting them you can see me starting the second row now doing the exact same thing just taking the two jute pieces that are next to each other and knotting them and once you're finishing up your knots you'll start running out of jute and when this happens you are almost at the end and this is when I just grab the ends of the jute pieces and pulled them to finish everything off and tie some knots at the bottom. I wasn't too worried about making this super pretty because this is going to be the bottom part so you're not going to really see it. And then once I was done making the fishing net I picked up some of this sea glass from the Dollar Tree bonus points if you have some of your own sea glass and sand save from maybe your travels and then I grabbed one of these faux candles also from the Dollar Tree turned it on and placed the sea glass all around it so that it would hold our candle in place It wouldn't be a beach or nautical themed DIY video if I didn't include at least one pirate themed DIY. So for this next craft, I am going to show you how to create your own pirate treasure chest. We're going to start off this nautical DIY with painting our wood crate from the Dollar Tree. I'm taking a microfiber cloth and some Waverly wax paint in the color antique and I am rubbing that onto the sides of our wood crate and that middle stripe area. To make this blue paint color, I mixed the shade English Navy from Apple Barrel with the shade Cayman Blue from Folk Art. And I'm applying this to the top stripe area of our wood crate. And also on the top of our wood crate, I'm going to be applying this to the middle stripe. Then I tried to make more of a beige color by mixing some brown paint with some white paint and I'm applying this to the top of our wood crate. Again, I'm going to be going in that middle stripe with the blue color, but I just apply that to the top at first and to the bottom stripe. And you can see on the top, I did go ahead and add in the blue color to that middle stripe. I want this chest to look super old, like it has been hiding on a pirate ship for centuries. So I'm going in very heavy handedly with some brown paint and my stippling brush and really just dirtying up this chest. To make the knot that's going to go on top of our chest, I use some nautical jute rope from the Dollar Tree. It was twisted together this natural color and this navy blue. I untwisted them so it wasn't quite as thick. And unfortunately, I forgot to hit record when I was making it, so I'm going to be demonstrating instead on this blue nautical rope. You'll take an end of the rope in each hand, make a small loop with the rope in your right hand. Then with your left hand, you're going to take the rope and go over the knot, then under and through the knot and pull. And if that was a little confusing, don't worry, I'm gonna do it again like three more times for you all. So again, we're making this little loop with the rope in our right hand. Then you take the rope in your left hand and go through the back of that circle, over the circle, and then through it from the back and pull. And I believe this is called a snake knot. I was looking up different types of nautical knots that you could make. And two of the places said this was a snake knot. So if you need a little bit more detailed of a tutorial on how to make this, that is what you'd want to Google. Again, making the loop, taking the rope in the left hand and pulling it through the loop, over and then back through and pulling tight to complete the knot. 
and you can just go ahead and add however many knots that you would like to complete the rope which we're going to later be hot gluing on top of our chest. But first I wanted to make some straps for the chest so I got this faux leather ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I hot glued it down to each end of our wood crate. Then with our completed snake knot rope, we are going to hot glue that to the top of our chest so that it acts as a handle to it. I found these starfish pins at the Dollar Tree and thought they were so cute and knew that I had to use it as the centerpiece on this chest. So I went ahead and painted it this rusty red color and hot glued it to the center of our chest. I love the weathered look of this chest and think that it will be the perfect piece of rustic coastal decor. The next Dollar Tree DIY is a piece of a lighthouse wall decor. When I saw that the Dollar Tree had all of their nautical beach decor out, I first spotted this lighthouse sign and thought it was so unique that I just had to pick it up to DIY. So first I am starting off by taking the whole thing apart, removing all of the ribbon from the back, and sanding off any bits of glitter that were on the wording on top of our lighthouse. Similar to what we did with our previous chest DIY, I want this to look like an old nautical item, so I want to make this a very old looking lighthouse. So to start, I am going to just paint everything white and get a nice clean base so then we can go in with our navy and start shading. The main color here is going to be that dark navy and then I'm going to add in a bit of the red just like I did in the first DIY. So I'm taking my blue paint and painting the entire bottom part of the lighthouse and the top and bottom part of the first piece of the lighthouse. I wanted to add a 3D fence area to the top of the lighthouse. So I'm actually taking these fences that are from an old Christmas scene and I'm really happy that I didn't throw these out because I've actually used them in a spring DIY video too. And what I'm doing is taking my miter shears, which I got from Amazon, I will link them down below, and I'm just cutting off four of these little fence posts and I'm going to be lining those up along the window area on the top of our lighthouse. So I'm just taking some brown paint and painting them brown so that they will pop against the dark navy background. And originally I had planned to paint this area brown, which is why I was a little bit careless when I was putting down the blue paint, but I decided to paint it white instead so that our fence posts would pop more. Before adding in the fence posts, now that the paint on my lighthouse has dried, it is time to distress it. Again, I want this to look like a very old and weathered lighthouse, so I'm taking my stippling brush that I got from the Crafter Square section of the Dollar Tree and some brown paint from Apple Barrel and just going all around the lighthouse making lines and trying to distress it. To add a nautical look to the fence that's going on the top of our lighthouse, I wrapped jute around it twice and then hot glued it down. And without cutting the line of jute, I went ahead and added another fence post connecting the two with the jute and again wrapping it twice around the fence post before hot gluing it down onto our lighthouse. I repeated this process with the other two fence posts and then just hot glued the last little piece of jute on the end to the back of our lighthouse. Next, to piece our lighthouse back together and turn it into a hanging sign, I flipped the entire lighthouse over and I'm going to be using a piece of jute to hold together our lighthouse. I measured about three quarters of an inch between all of the lighthouse pieces. It didn't exactly stay precisely that size, but I tried my best to keep it at three quarters of an inch. And then I just took some tape to tape down where I thought the jute should go before going in with my hot glue gun to permanently hold the jute in place. With our sign now hanging in place, it's time to add the last little bits of embellishment onto the sign. So I love this red anchor. I found it at the Dollar Tree and I thought it would look so cute on this lighthouse, kind of how I did the red starfish on the last DIY. I loved the touch of red with the nautical blue. I wanted something holding onto my anchor, so I took some nautical rope and just placed it into the center of our anchor. It was too thick to pull all the way through, 
but putting down some hot glue in the center of it worked fine. And then I wanted it to kind of snake up the lighthouse, so again I'm using tape just to map out my pattern before I end up going back in with the glue gun to make this permanent. And I did add a little curly circle at the top as well. To finish off this DIY, I took a piece of jute and strung it through the hole that was already made at the top of this project and went ahead and tied it into a knot to turn it back into a hanging sign. The next DIY may look intricate, but it's actually really easy and uses minimal supplies. Let's get started making our coastal candle. So we are going to be making our very own coastal candle. And the first thing that I'm doing is cutting a bunch of bamboo skewers that I got from the Dollar Tree. You get a hundred in a pack, so it's a really great deal. And I already did one side of the candle for you so that you have a visual aid as I try to explain why I'm cutting the bamboo skewers. And basically what we're going to be doing is trying to create some dune fencing for our candle. So I'm cutting the bamboo skewers with these miter shears that I got off Amazon, which I absolutely love. And I'm cutting them at all sorts of different heights. And then I took a rubber band and put it around my glass candle. And this way I can kind of figure out how I want the faux dune fencing to look before I add the hot glue to make it permanent. So I'm just playing around with the different lengths of the bamboo skewers until I figure out a pattern that I like. And then I removed them from the glass jar and took off the rubber bands and went ahead and made my pattern permanent by adding some hot glue and placing the bamboo skewers down onto our glass candle holder. Then I completed the exact same process to the two last remaining sides of our glass candle, putting down the rubber bands, applying the bamboo skewers, kind of figuring out the placement that I want, then removing our rubber bands and permanently placing down our bamboo skewers with some hot glue. As a border around the bottom of our glass nautical candle, I took some jute and just hot glued it all the way around and I ended up doing this four times so I had a semi-thick band of jute at the bottom of our candle. As the focal piece for our candle, I am taking one of these shells that came in a bag of a bunch of them at the Dollar Tree and hot gluing it to the front of our glass jar. Now I am taking some white sand and filling up about a quarter of our candle holder. Then I took one of these set of candles from the Dollar Tree and I just kind of twisted it down into the sand so that it is nice and secure at the center of our candle holder. I continued adding a little bit more sand around the candle, but not too much because I don't want it to be higher than where our bamboo skewer sticks are because I still want it to look like the skewer sticks are holding back the sand dunes. The next DIY uses a rather unlikely supply and that is flip-flops from the Dollar Tree. I'm starting off with one of the wood signs from the Dollar Tree. This is actually one from the Easter season. That's why it's always good to pick up signs from the Dollar Tree because you can always make them over. And I tried to make a beige kind of sandy color. If I had a peachy sand color paint, that would have been great. But I didn't, so I just combined some white and brown. After painting my sign, I wanted to go in and draw some more kind of sea-themed things on my sign. So I decided to go with coral, and I drew it just with a white colored pencil in the four corners of my sign. I wasn't sure where exactly I wanted the coral to be. Um, I decided when I put the flip-flops down that I would have it in the upper right and the bottom left corners of my sign. So I just went back in with white paint and then some darker brown paint to shadow things in. I could have erased the coral that's in the other section, but I thought it still kind of looked cool, so I decided to leave it. Moving on to the flip-flops, I got these at the Dollar Tree during the summer season, and I thought these would be great for the DIY, but I wanted it to be a bit more nautical and rustic looking, so I am fixing the thong section on my flip-flop. 
And how I'm fixing this to fit in more with my theme is I took some nautical rope from, of course, the Dollar Tree, and I am hot gluing it down onto the plastic part of the flip-flop. And the thong area was a little bit wider than I thought, so I ended up using two rows of nautical rope to cover up that plastic blue area. I wanted to add a little centerpiece on my flip-flop and these nautical pins from the Dollar Tree were absolutely perfect. They already came in this really gorgeous blue color so I just took a bit of white paint and my chipping brush and just distressed the seahorses. The seahorses came attached to a clothespin but it was really easy. I just peeled the seahorse off of that and then I hot glued it to the center area of our flip-flops. The last thing was just attaching the flip-flops down onto my sign and I did this just with some hot glue. I did hold it down a little bit longer just because I wasn't sure how the foam would work in the hot glue but it worked just fine. I pressed it down onto my board and they stuck. And in the process of trying to clean up, I threw away the jute hanger that it came with or it's somewhere on my floor and I just can't find it. So I took some jute that I had and just placed it through the holes that were already in our sign. Then I grabbed these two small candles from the Dollar Tree and stuck those down into the flip-flops. You could always hot glue them to make sure they really stay in place, but I ended up actually using tea lights. These candles are just for decoration, so don't go lighting the candles because that would be a massive fire hazard, but they look just as cute with tea lights. Our next coastal DIY is a seashell trinket tray. You can place any of your trinkets in here, but I think it looks great with some earrings and rings or other pieces of jewelry. This DIY is super easy, but I think it looks very high-end, like a trinket that you would find at Anthropology or Urban Outfitters. And we are starting off by taking this gorgeous napkin from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just taking my pair of precision scissors that I got from the Crafters Square section and just fussy cutting out a cluster of these florals from the napkin. And I actually found this napkin in the baby shower supply section of the Dollar Tree. I don't know why it was in there instead of the regular party section, but maybe check out that section. That's why you really have to go up and down every single aisle at the Dollar Tree because you never know where you're going to find stuff. Then I took some Mod Podge and just painted it onto these Dollar Tree seashells. And we're just going to decoupage the napkin down onto our shell. So I'm going over the napkin with some more Mod Podge. And you can find these seashells at the Dollar Tree in the section where they keep rocks. Sometimes they'll have sands and usually the ribbons. It's not always in the crafter square section, but usually the aisle right next to it. This last part is what I think makes it look way more high-end than just a Dollar Tree item and really transforms it into a jewelry or a catch-all trinket tray. And that is taking some of this gold, it's called the Brushed Metal Paint by Folk Art, and I'm going all around the seashell like a gold border. And I love the way that this paint dries. It's not just a gold paint, it really is shiny and looks truly like some brushed metal. So I just went all the way around my seashell and I absolutely loved the touch that this added to the decoupage shell. But if you're more of a silver person, you can substitute that instead of the gold or even take some little small pearl stickers from the Dollar Tree and add those around it. The next DIY, I really wanted to create a sea scene, something that kind of reminded me of maybe like an elementary school project. I think this would be a really fun one to do with your kids. I'm beginning by taking one of the smaller canvases from the Dollar Tree. If you haven't seen this trick before, these are great wood frames. So I just removed the canvas and then I was left with this really nice wood that I ended up painting in a white color using Waverly chalk paint. And I painted the entire thing white and you'll see that I leave one side. I couldn't <laughs> quite get it where my hand was. And then we're going to be using a lot of nature in this DIY. So all of these are twigs that I picked up in my backyard with help from my new puppy. I'll insert a picture of him. He really enjoyed helping me pick out these sticks. So once this was dried, I completed painting it. 
And then I went in and started painting some of these sticks and twigs. I'm using a couple different colors. I will use a dark blue, a gray, and then kind of a more white, light gray color. Then I went back to the frame. I kept going back and forth between painting the twigs and sticks and painting the frame as things were drying. So I went in with the color Elephant by Waverly and just used a dry trip brush and just started dry brushing on it. While I let that dry, I moved on to some rocks, which of course I also got in my backyard. So I picked up a couple of these and I end up painting some gray and I think one or two in that dark blue color that I'm going to be using shortly in the video. And these, I wasn't sure exactly how many I was going to use, but they're just going to be little embellishments that I add later on into our seascape. And now that everything is dry, it's time to start putting this actually together. So I took my hot glue and then my sticks that I painted and I just started placing them down, kind of going in different directions. I wanted it to look like coral, of course, from the ocean, so nothing too uniform. And a couple of the twigs were a little bit too tall, so I end up snapping some of them. But really, I just played around with this and put them in how I thought looked best. I think this would also be a really fun craft for kids. You can either use the hot glue gun for them, they can tell you where they want certain items placed, or you could just use regular liquid glue and have them place down the seashells and all of the fun little sea characters. I think this would be really great for them to do, but of course make sure that you're the one handling the hot glue gun if you choose to use that. I also know the Dollar Tree section has lots of the Finding Nemo characters, so again, if you wanted to make it a kid's craft, you could always add in those. I decided to use the seashells that we used earlier and one of these starfish pins. I really wanted some kelp or some seaweed in this craft, but I didn't have any, and then I remembered that I had this reindeer moss from the Dollar Tree, and I remember when I bought it during the Christmas season, I was like, this is not reindeer moss. It looks like seaweed. It's very odd feeling. It's kind of rubbery. I haven't seen it too much at the Dollar Tree. I think they went back to whatever their original formula was. But if you see this, pick it up because it's really great looking like seaweed and it holds its shape pretty well. There are long strings versus the normal reindeer moss, which is just, you know, regular moss. So this was kind of a fail when I purchased it, but it ended up really working out. I love how my seascape ended up. I think it would be really beautiful on a nightstand if you have a beach themed room. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.